This lesson is on electrochemistry, focusing on the electrolytic cells, specifically the non-spontaneous electrolytic cells. The energy change that happens in electrolytic cells is the change from electrical energy into chemical energy. We put in electrical energy and produce chemical energy. Here's a basic diagram of an electrolytic cell. The important thing to note is that there is no salt bridge, which we did have in the galvanic cell. We have an actual cell or battery with our positive and negative terminals respectively. We can see the movement going from positive to negative with our electrons. We have a solution of CuCl2. We have an anode, which is positive, and our cathode, which is negative. Okay, over here we have the reaction of 2Cl minus to form two electrons and Cl2 plus 1.3 volts. It wants to reduce, it does not want to form Cl2. Over here, we have our other reaction of copper forming copper 2 plus and two electrons with a positive 0.34 volts. We can see that energy is going to be needed to force the Cl minus to oxidize and the Cu2 plus to reduce. It won't happen on its own. It needs some form of energy for this reaction to happen. When electricity is provided, our anode becomes positive and our cathode becomes negative. Ions are attracted to each electrode. This is because ions have a charge and our electrodes now have a charge. So we're going to have ions being attracted to their respective electrodes. So the positive electrode, electron, electrons, are pulled from the negative ions and the negative electrons, I'm sorry, the negative electrode, the ions gain electrons. Each time a negative ion is oxidized, a new ion moves in. So every time we have a negative ion in our solution being oxidized and becoming part of one of the neutral compounds, the new ion will move into the solution. There becomes this gradual flow of electrons from the liquid to the positive electrode. The electrons move through the external circuit to the negative electrode gained by positive ions. Okay. The overall effect of this whole movement and gradual flow of electrons will cause redox reactions to take place and the electron flow through the external circuit. So I'll just go through that again. Ions are attracted to each electrode. So with the positive electron, electrode, electrons are pulled from negative ions. In the negative electrode, the ions gain electrons. Each time a negative ion is oxidized, a new ion moves in to the solution. There becomes a gradual flow of electrons from the liquid to the positive electrode. The electrons move through the external circuit to the negative electrode gained by positive ions. And we once again see the overall effect that the reduction, redox reactions will take place and the electrons flow through the external circuit. This is just a system and flow of things which you would need to understand to get your overall effect. Okay. We need to know that the positive ions move to the cathode because the cathode is negative. So the positive ions are attracted to the negative cathode. The negative ions move to the anode, which is positive. 
we can see that the positive ions go to the negative electrode, which is the cathode, and the negative ions go to the positive electrode, which is the anode, because positive and negative attract. This is called electrolytic conduction. The non-spontaneous reaction. We start with CuCl2. Okay. Cu2 plus plus two electrons gives you Cu, so copper. For Cu2 plus to react, it needs these electrons. With Cl2, it needs to gain two electrons to form Cl minus. For Cl minus to react, it needs to donate electrons. So we see that this reaction will not occur because Cu2 plus cannot oxidize and Cl minus cannot reduce. The EMF of the cell will be negative naught, sorry, 1.02 volts. Therefore, 1.02 volts is needed to allow the reaction to take place. So this, the EMF of, of the cell, we get this value by using the formula on our formula sheet, which we have covered in previous videos. So once we've received this is Cell. It shows us that this is the amount of this is the voltage needed for the cell for the cell to allow the reaction to take place. Okay. At the anode, electrons will leave Cl minus and Cl2 is produced. At the cathode, Cu2 plus will gain electrons and copper will form. So it couldn't just happen by itself. We needed the volts, the voltage for this reaction. It needed energy to take place. Now we move on to what the difference is between these electrolytic cells and the galvanic cells. In an electrolytic cell, we have one cell. In a galvanic cell, there are actually two cells with a salt bridge. In the electrolytic, the cathode is negative and the anode is positive, whereas in the galvanic, the cathode is positive and the anode is negative. The energy change in the electrolytic cell is from electrical energy to chemical energy because we need electrical energy, we need energy for the reactions to take place. Whereas the galvanic cell is the change from chemical energy to electrical energy. It produces an electrical energy. The, in the electrolytic, we have an electrode. The electrodes can be any metal, whereas in the galvanic cell, the electrodes must be of the same metal. And when we, in our electrolytic cell, we can notice it being electrolytic by its battery or DC power, and we can notice galvanic cell by its voltmeter. So you can see that in the electrolytic cell, you need the battery to provide the electrical energy. Whereas in the galvanic cell, the voltmeter measures the electrical energy produced. So we start off with chemical energy and we measure the amount of elect electrical energy produced at the end. Whereas in our electrolytic cell, we provide the electrical energy in order to receive the chemical energy because the chemical reactions cannot take place on their own. They need the energy for it to take place. And one of the most important things is that our electrolytic cell is non-spontaneous, but our galvanic cell is spontaneous. Then we have water in aqueous solutions. When an electrolyte is aqueous, there's a there is the possible possibility, should I say, that oxidation or reduction would happen with the water in our electrolyte. So we have this competing of reactions. So it's not only got to do with the ions in the water, but also the water itself. So in the solution, you have your ions, generally your two sets of ions. So in the previous one, we had copper and chlorine. 
now we having they what we're saying now is that there's a possibility that water could also be either the oxidation or the reduction reaction they now compete so a general rule of thumb to know whether water is going to be one of the reactions or not okay anion is polyatomic so if we have say now so 2 minus then water will be oxidized so if our anion is polyatomic then water will be oxidized it's always good to use your table for b so if you look on your formula sheet you can see and use your um your strengths of oxidizing agents and oxidizing and reducing agents to notice and see which one is stronger and therefore which one will be which has a stronger reducing or oxidizing ability and therefore which one will be the reducing or oxidizing agent respectively. We, I have covered this in the previous video as to see which one is which, but generally you go your usual table and whichever one is a stronger or has a stronger oxidizing ability, that will be reduced and whichever has a stronger reducing ability, that will be oxidized. So this note is basically telling us to remember that in an aqueous solution, there's also water present. So we need to take into account that water could be a possible oxidizing or reducing agent. And it could be the oxidation or reduction reaction. Then another point, if voltage difference is less than 0.3 volts, then concentration may affect it. Okay. So the main, main gist of the water in an aqueous solution is to remember that it's in there and use your table for B to see whether it's going to be the oxidation or reduction reaction or whether it will just remain the spectator and it won't react. So there will, in aqueous solutions, there's actually three options. Which is important to remember and they are competing reactions and just as how we would have established which one is an oxidizing react and which one is a reducing by using the table we can do the same we have to do the same thing with our water in the aqueous solution that is all for the this video the next video will be on the applications of electrochemistry so the copper refining and Claw alkali industry.